Well, last night on The Masked Singer Australia, the hammerhead was revealed to us as cricket legend Michael Bevan. Let's have a look at his time on the show last night. And we are absolutely thrilled to have him join us on the show today. Michael, welcome to the Ben, Rob and Robbo show. Woo. Thanks, yeah. guys. Thanks for having me. Much appreciated. Now, Michael, before we get started, I just want to take an issue with something that I saw on social media. In your Twitter bio, you said, sings okay. Now, that's not necessarily true because we saw you singing and you were brilliant. Okay. I will definitely up date that to sings better than okay for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, well, I will appreciate that. And I will say you were fantastic. Husey even said that he, at first he thought that you were Shannon Noll, but then he went on to say that you could sing better than Shannon Noll. Where have you been hiding this voice and how long has it taken for you to get onto a show like this? He just, he just got caught up in the hammerhead moment. Um, <laughs> maybe a bit of over enthusiasm, <laughs> but look, it was look. Some of the judges, uh, in terms of who they thought I was, were, was very was quite flattering, really. And um, <laughs> and so, you know, I, I guess after the performance, you never really know how you how how you've done because you're so caught up in what you're doing. You hope you deliver it all right, and um, you know. By the sounds of it, um, everyone was pretty happy, and I was too. Michael, I think you were, you were bloody brilliant. Now, singing is in the family, though. Your daughter Liv was in The Voice a few years ago. Did you take any inspiration from her? Oh, of course, of course. Um, Liv did a great job on The Voice. She hasn't had much uh, live singing experience, so it was a bit of a... Um, a bit of a challenge for her, but she had three three judges turn for her in her first performance, and so we were all very proud of how she did, and uh, hopefully um, that that feeling can be reciprocated. Oh, that's lovely. We've actually got a clip of you both singing together. Let's have a look at that. Cause you only need the light when it's burning low. Only miss the sun when it starts to snow. Only know you love her when you let it go. Oh my God, that was Magic that was God. brilliant. Was that fun to perform with your, your daughter like that? That was great. Yeah, it was pretty amazing. She asked me to do that and uh, she put it all together and um, produced it all and chose the song and, and um, you know, so... You know, I had the good fortune of spending a bit of time with her and listening to her voice. Look, I think she's got a great voice and, um, you know, very, very, um, very proud of, of, of what she's doing at the moment. And so, um, you know, if I was half as good as what she was, then I was, I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> has music been, um, has music been a big part of your life, uh, Michael, in the um, look, it, it has. I mean, maybe not not in the way that for the same or for the same reasons for other people. But for me, um, I've always loved singing, um, and I always sing to songs, whether it's in the car or it's at home. And uh, I'm not one of these the guys that will just just listen to something. I need to sing with it, um, and I get a lot of joy from doing that. Um, and so, for me, doing this show was. You know that was one of the the great experiences that I could, that, that I could have because I love it. Um, the performance side of things is probably slightly more uncomfortable for me, and so that's where the sort of um, sort of the the nervousness came from from my perspective. 
You know what, I need to ask you about something. Last night, I feel like I got a real human moment from you, even though you had a hammerhead shark's head on top of your head. Uh, but as they said that we're going to have to reveal yourself, I actually felt deeply saddened. I felt really sad for the hammerhead. Were you emotional at that point? Because that's what came across. Um, well, yes, I mean, yeah, yeah, for different reasons. I mean, there's, a, there's kind of a bit of anticipation a uh, bit of relief, a uh, bit of uncertainty there and, and, and surprise as well. And so you're all just trying to take it in. And, of course, there's the aspect where you've just been kick, kicked off the show and you're not happy about it. And um, so, look, you've got a lot of stuff going on there. But by and large, it was um, it was a pretty enjoyable experience. And I know I sort of only lasted one episode, but, um, you know, it was nice to be able to punch out Jimmy Barnes' working class man. Do you know what I really want to say just before we quickly finish up here? And that is that what I think is amazing is you had a fantastic cricketing career and then you've gone on to do something like this. And, you know, it must have been really hard from, for you back in the day to step away from cricket. Uh, is it important to tell people out there that there's still more after having sporting careers? Look, I think so. I mean, I think it's different for everyone. I mean, some stay in the coaching game, some stay affiliated with the sport or maybe commentary. Um, for me, I never really harboured any grand ambitions of, of staying in the sport. And I'm one of these people that when it's finished, it's finished and you can move on. And, and for me, I gave everything that I could. And it was I was very fortunate, very grateful to go through it. And the other thing from my perspective, too, is when I finished, you know, I was 37 years old and I, um, you know, the body was, was aching and there was a lot of pain there. And, you know, you sort of try and get through that to achieve your goals and by the time I, I, I retired or made the decision to retire it was actually quite um, it was long overdue and um, quite a relief and so look I'm happy to move on and find other things to do in my life whatever that is and um, you know that's played a part and a very important part and um, you know I think the key is then to sort of go on and find other things that that, that you enjoy doing. Well, definitely don't rule out music because you're a sensational singer. You're never too old to have a number one on the Australian charts. And I'll tell you what, there's at least four people on this show right now that would buy your single if it came out. So congratulations yep. on your time yep. on The Masked Singer. Thank you so much for joining us today. And we'll uh, definitely be looking for you on iTunes. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Much appreciated. <laughs> Thanks, Michael. It's a Ben, Rob and Rob, oh, Ben, Rob and Rob, oh, Shen.